After an awesome back and forth game between Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, the AFC Championship game turned to overtime. The Patriots won the coin toss and they started the drive at their own 25. During this 13 play 75 yard drive, the Patriots did most of their damage on third down. They had three on this drive and they converted each of them easily, allowing them to move the ball. Before we talk about those plays in particular, I wanted to cover the entire drive play by play so you can see just how the Patriots set up those third and 10 situations. To start, the Patriots lined up with 21 personnel or with two backs and one tight end on the field. On the left side of the formation, Edelman motioned from the outside into a stacked look on the left, seeing that the Chiefs had a safety head up on Gronk while simultaneously the cornerbacks at the top openly discussed their combo rules, this was a dead giveaway that the Chiefs were in man coverage. Against this defense, or cover one with a single high safety, the stacked look served multiple purposes. Not only can there be miscommunications between the defensive players, but it also gives the receiver lining up in the back of the stack a free release if the defense wanted to play physically. Another thing that you should note, and this all happened before the snap, was that Kendall Fuller backed up in his man coverage duties. He purposely dropped five yards from his original position and played off man coverage on this play. This told Brady that Chris Hogan would probably be open after his seven step drop. This is where he started his read and he quickly threw the ball to him for the easy 10 yard gain. Now, if Fuller was more aggressive out of his break, there's a decent chance that Brady would have been sacked. Number 91 bull rushed the center backwards while Justin Houston looked like he was about to disengage to make the tackle. What you'll also notice about this play design before we move on is that Edelman was open instantly as well. This is very important for later in this drive. McDaniel saw how the Chiefs were comboing these stacked looks and he called plays to exploit these rules later in the game. On their next play, the Patriots ran strong side duo and gained zero yards. This gap play attempted to get Burkhead through the strong side C gap, but Alan Bailey did a great job on his double team. The right tackle and the right guard couldn't move him. Burkhead slipped while making his cut, but Kendall Fuller would have been there anyways to make the tackle. This brings us to the Patriots second and 10 at the 35 yard line. New England lined up in almost exactly the same formation as their first play. They motioned Chris Hogan across the field, and with a trailing defender, the Chiefs were once again in man coverage. After the snap, the Chiefs dropped into cover one, but on this play, they rushed five in order to pressure Brady. This forced him to step up into the pocket, and he wasn't able to make an accurate throw to the pressure. There was only a small place for him to put the ball, but the coverage was just too good, and his pass was too high. This was a good play by the Chiefs defense, and it forced the Patriots into a third and long. As I mentioned earlier, Brady and McDaniels used their pre-snap understanding of the Chiefs defense in order to help them convert on these plays. Once again, the Chiefs stuck to man coverage while the Patriots used the same exact short motion to give his receivers a free release. With two deep safeties, the Chiefs were actually in cover two on this play. After the snap, there was a clear miscommunication between the Chiefs cornerbacks. Both defenders thought they were responsible for Philip Dorsett while Edelman was left wide open and he gained 20 yards on this play. Before we move on, I want you to keep this miscommunication in the back of your mind. It was in response to Edelman's short motion, and that'll play a big factor late in this drive. Moving on for their fifth play of this drive, the Patriots attempted to attack the defense deep. By the way, the defense lined up to the trips on the right, and because the safety came down the field, this gave Brady a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Dorsey on the left. He trusted that his receiver could beat Steven Nelson on the fade route. Based on the leverage of the defender after the snap, Brady purposely threw the ball short and attempted to throw a back shoulder fade. He put the ball to the outside of his receiver and towards the sideline, hoping that Dorsett could make the proper adjustment. Unfortunately, Dorsett was well covered and he couldn't fight off the defender to make the catch. If you're looking at this play purely from an execution standpoint, you can't criticize a safe downfield decision like this one. There's very little risk and when you have a one-on-one, -on -one, you have to trust that your receiver can make a play. So for that reason, I obviously don't blame Brady for this incompletion. My only real criticism on this play simply has to do with using Dorsett in this manner. He's not a physically dominant receiver, so calling a back shoulder fade where he has to fight for the ball using body control isn't my favorite decision. Regardless, this brings us to a second and 10. On the left, the Patriots ran a slant flat concept using Patterson on the slant while the running back sprinted towards the sideline. With safety Eric Murray stepping up to the line of scrimmage, this gave Brady an easy throwing window to Patterson. Patterson took a stutter release. He then broke across looking for the ball. He was open if the ball was placed further in front, but the pass was behind its mark. Now, it's possible that Brady didn't expect Patterson to break this quickly. This could explain why the ball is behind the target, but it did still hit him in the hands. If you want to be more than a gadget player in this offense, you have to make these plays. Well, after these two incomplete passes, the Patriots were faced with another third and 10 on this drive. Lining up in shotgun, the Patriots used that same exact short motion with Edelman that we talked about earlier. He moved from the outside into the stacked look on the right. 
Instead of an inside-out or high-low combo coverage, the Chiefs decided to stick to their assignments on this play. What that means is that whomever the defender had pre-motion, the defender had the same receiver post-motion. And as we discussed earlier, this is the result of those two short motion plays. They didn't want to give up another easy gain. However, that's exactly what happened here. If you're a Chiefs fan, this is where I'd be angry. We literally saw the Patriots use this motion more than once with Edelman attacking the center of the field, and yet Bob Sutton called cover two, leaving the center of the field open. He expected his out leveraged defender to trail this receiver, who was literally known for these type of plays. You have to give your defense help. I don't get this at all. In my opinion, you play cover one robber if you want to stick to man, or you just switch it to zone. That didn't happen here, and Edelman got a free release, allowing him to gain an easy 15 yards. So with that big gain, the Patriots are now at the 30-yard line. In the vein of the first down to Philip Dorsett where McDaniels attempted to attack deep, he called a flea flicker on this play. Their obvious goal was to catch the defense off guard, but it failed, which brings us to another 2nd and 10. Before the snap, the Patriots motioned Gronkowski across the field, which signaled to Brady that the defense was in man coverage. This time, they played cover one robber in order to protect the center of the field. With the right safety rotating deep and Patterson taking inside leverage on his cornerback, Brady saw a potential window for his throw. Unfortunately, just like before, Patterson couldn't fight for the ball as he fell to the ground and the pass fell incomplete. Once again, the Patriots busted on a first and second down, which leads us to our third and final instance of a third and 10 on this drive. You'd think at this point that the defense should probably get a stop. Well, you already know the end of the story, and the Chiefs allowed another key third down conversion. On the left side, the Patriots ran a slant flat concept, giving Gronkowski a one on one with Eric Berry. Brady saw the left safety drop underneath, but he still had a window for his throw. He saw that Barry opened his hips and took outside leverage, so he put the ball right in front of Gronk. This was a dangerous throw if the safety attacked him more quickly, but Brady's quick decision making is what makes him so good. Gronk stretched out, caught the pass, and then fell over, gaining a 15-yard conversion. At this point in this drive, we are 10 plays down, and the Patriots have only called one running play so far. The next three plays that finish this game are all runs. The offensive line did a great job at opening up holes, which allowed Burkhead to do the rest. On the first run, the Patriots called ISO lead strong, taking advantage of a 7-on-7 -seven box. After the snap, a nice gap opened outside the right tackle. The fullback led the way through this hole, and Burkhead rumbled forward, gaining an easy 10 yards. Sticking with that same old-school smash-mouth mentality, the Patriots ran counter tree on their next run. They pulled the backside guard to kick out the end man in the line of scrimmage, while the fullback pulled through behind him. There wasn't much there, but Burkhead was still able to gain three on this play. Finally, and on second and goal, two to go, the Patriots ran one more time to score their touchdown. They lined up in heavy personnel, motioned their tight end back and forth to disguise their play call, and then ran duo gap lead to get Burkhead into the end zone. I credit a good fullback block by James Devlin, and I also credit Trent Brown for washing Justin Hamilton down the line of scrimmage. This opened the hole, and Burkhead made the right read to send his team to the Super Bowl. Overall, when I look at this drive, I pretty much saw a good offense taking advantage of a poor defense on third down plays. I saw miscommunication, I saw a terrible play call, and then I just saw a great throw by Tom Brady to convert. The Chiefs were able to bring some pressure to Brady early in this drive, but it wasn't enough to turn their fortune on third and long. This short motion was simply the death of this defense. If you look at this game as a whole, the Patriots converted on 13 of their 19 third down attempts. That's good for 68%, while the Chiefs only managed a third down conversion on 44% of their attempts. The crazy thing to me though, is how the Chiefs were able to match the Patriots offense in this game. They literally had the ball for half as much time and half as many first down attempts, but they were incredibly efficient in the second half. Unfortunately for them though, a good offensive performance was simply overshadowed by a defensive collapse and that ended this game. Well, that's all I have for you. As we wrap up the final weeks of the season and get close to the Super Bowl, make sure you sign up at MyBookie to place all your wagers. They're still offering a 50% sign-up bonus for up to $1,000, and you can use this to make your Super Bowl picks. I should have one more film room out before the big game, and I'll also be releasing a picks video next week as well. To take advantage of that offer, make sure you use the promo code SAMUEL50 when you sign up. As a side note, I'm still debating what I want to do for my next film room, so if you have any ideas, please put them in the comment section below. The reason why I'm hesitant to do anything on the Saints-Rams game comes with the obvious territory that no matter what I say about that game, people will only talk about the referees. Yes, that did happen, but dealing with a bunch of angry Saints fans isn't exactly something I want to do in my free time. Regardless, thank you so much for all of your support throughout the season. If you want to keep this channel going, make sure you check out my Patreon account and you can follow me on Twitter at SamuelRGold.